just got a severe weather warning on the radio. You don't have scared me. <laughs> I'm scared me. <laughs> that was huge. I'm pretty tired. I feel like I'm drunk. Oh, I'm trying to sail in here. It's not working. We are officially adrift. I'm Elena, and this is Rally, and this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> We've been sailing around the world for the last five years and have recently found ourselves with a stowaway. Meet Lenny. Subscribe and welcome aboard. And then this morning when I woke up at like 5.30 with Lenny, he was like, go back to sleep if you're tired, I'll watch Lenny. Which was amazing because I got like an extra hour of uninterrupted sleep. Lenny was kind of tossing and turning. These teeth are coming out and apparently those are really bad. The plan is to stay on this tack for 60 nautical miles and then we're going to drive and hopefully be headed on course. We're nearly there. I just put Lenny back to bed so... I don't know how long he'll be down for. I make the most of it. <laughs> Delicious. I've actually heard that these aren't too bad, but I can't bring myself to frying one and eating it. <laughs> The wind's like consistent and we're just flying the code D up. We have full power right now because the hydro generators had a hell of a workout this morning. So we're just charging our laptops, all the drone batteries. I turned on the fridge that we have turned off. So yeah, just having a big fat power party right now. What else can I charge? We've already got full water. It feels so good to be out here with more than what we need to survive, apart from vegetables. <laughs> What's the first thing you want to eat when you get to New York? I feel like ice cream. Key lime pie. Key lime pie. I need to learn how to make ice cream. I think it's not hard. You need cornstarch. Let me know. Jive I love having or going a long way towards having an autonomous boat and I thought that that what and see would be amazing and it's a good bit of kit but what happens is you need to have the fins set to a certain pitch for what speed that you've got. I think their product is really good in certain circumstances so if you're a mono hull or a catamaran that's not going to have such a dramatic change in speed and it's by far the most dangerous thing I do on the boat. We just got a severe weather warning on the radio. We've had a good eye on the weather. It'd be very strange if something popped out that we didn't know about. There's a big patch 300 miles around of about 25 knots in the middle, so it would be 30, 35, but not for another week. <laughs> Tidying up with a baby. Oh yeah! Oh. oh my god! That was a gnarly wave. Stop saying gnarly, I'm not a surfer. It's just surfing down a pretty big wave there. <laughs> The air's gotten 
so much cooler already. What latitude are we at? We're 38 degrees north and it's a hell of a lot cooler up here. Got another huge rolling wave looking cloud coming off the coast of the US. Exactly the same as the rolling cloud we saw off the coast of Florida. So Riley's just taking down the code D completely because if we get 40 knots and it blows a hourglass, yeah. Can you just keep an eye on the radar yep. and get an idea of what direction it's headed? So as I was saying, Riley's just taking down the code D and we'll probably take a reef. We're starting to think now that that severe weather warning that we heard, which was really crackly, we're thinking that maybe this is that. What do you think? Should we be concerned? So I'm just looking at the radar, watching it to see if it gets any closer. Well, it's a wave like the other one. And I think they just come at you regardless. I don't like the waves. It's scary. It's all good. I'll just drop the main in a minute and then, I mean, we're good for 50 knots or more. So, and plenty of sea room. It's the most bizarre thing, but there is like two lines surrounding the cloud, two lines above it. And it's like nothing I've ever seen before. I wish I could film it for you, but I can't. Hmm. This is gonna get pretty rough. This is it here coming this way. Oh no, it keeps changing, but it's a blob. It's a real blob. How much of that head sails away? The deck light's gone, I can't see anything. Still 30 knots of wind. We're actually going over all these underwater canyons, which I thought was pretty cool. It makes me excited to be in America. <laughs> Haven't seen the States, I've only ever been to Florida and flying through New York. We got to spend a day in New York and then we went to LA. But I'd really love to have the time to like explore. We should get to see a fair bit of uh, New York. <laughs> Good morning. I've been calling Lenny Monster lately. He's just got all the characteristics of a monster, seriously. He growls, bites, claws at you. But best of all, his like laughing, smiling face, you would have seen, is just this like... <laughs> he like kind of screws up his face and he just looks so cute and monster-like. <laughs> Could put the code zero up, but that's another one of those ferocious storms. The wind's coming from there, but I can see it on the radar and it's like growing, so the wind's already kind of picking up. <laughs> We're heading directly on course now. The wind also swung around. Still got two knots of current against us, which is really annoying because we could be going seven or eight knots now. We're still 117 nautical miles from Montauk. We have a friend there, Stuart, who has a dock and he said that we could use it. So that'll be pretty cool. We get to explore Montauk, a place we probably wouldn't have gone. We'll still get to explore the city, but we're gonna leave our boat in Montauk. <laughs> Mmm, what's the lunch? Butter and pasta again. That's couscous. A little bit of a difference. Is no, it? Not much though. It tastes like pasta. I like pasta. I didn't know the difference a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> This lure's too big to be trying to get dinner. There is life in the ocean, you guys. 
I have to admit, I'm like really excited to hop on the internet. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just really excited to connect with you guys again and everyone. I don't like that feeling of missing the internet because I've never had it before, honestly. I've always been so good at like keeping social media to a minimum. We took some good photos on this trip. Actually, maybe that's why I'm so excited. Been really getting into photography and videography. I think we're getting a little bit better, which excites me. With an 80 pound tortoise strapped to one's back was not easy particularly since each man was expected to bring back three tortoises a day to the ship. There's a fly infestation and they bite. Ah! You get it? No. Nah. Ah. So yeah, no idea where they're coming from. We did check out trash, but it's not coming from there. So a bit of Lenny's poo. New York, sort out your fly issue. Around 80 miles offshore, you need to do a bit of a clean up. Oh! actually need some wind because we've got this much diesel left at the bottom of the tank. There was wind there, there's supposed to be a dead patch and then there's wind up further so I'm just motoring through this. Gotcha! <laughs> well done. I think they hang out where the flying fish have been. I don't think it's even the flying fish, it's just land. It can't be. Let flies don't fly 70 miles alone. They can't smell scales. I would like to know what you guys think. Day, what, nine? All of a sudden there's flies here. Don't know how they got it. All at once. Oh, I see another one. Wanna bounce? Wanna bounce? To a place that has no Ow. Ow. No biking. Ow. Some nights we're dodging squalls and other nights <laughs> we're on engine. I'm eating popcorn and it is 11 p.m. and Riley's doing a workout to stay awake. Because we're closer to the city now, it's a good idea to stay awake and alert all night. So Riley's gonna wake me up at three. Well, it's actually blowing four knots. Now. Oh, look out. Can but we there's sail? a 1.5 knot current against this. And I'm gonna show you something really disgusting. So if you're eating, just don't eat. Dun 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 <laughs> Wiping spew off me, changing nappies, changing sails, looking out for big buoys because there's a lot of like fishing vessels around and pots out and stuff like that. No biting. We got some wind which is great because we have like no diesel. So we have to save that for coming into our little harbour where we'll be ow, docking. So we have to sail and luckily the wind swung around for us. Heading directly on course now. Feeling good, feeling good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Popcorn with nutritional yeast for breakfast. Mm -mm. Oh, Lenny, no. Lenny, we can't afford to be losing popcorn. We are hungry sailors. All right, let's get Daddy out of bed, Lenny. Riley had been doing the night shift for the last week or so, and the lack of sleep had finally caught up to him. I haven't been asleep for that long, like, ever. Get him up, Lenny. Attack. <laughs> get him. I don't know how long I slept for. Mate, it was like 14 or something. But you were waking up to alarms, hey? <laughs> Very briefly. We were just floating. Like, I couldn't yeah. be bothered putting a sail up. So we just drifted for the night. Amazing. You must have needed it. I think I'm scurvy. This is the greenest thing I've eaten in weeks. Don't have scurvy. I have scurvy. 
no fruit, vitamin C. I have a headache the past 24 hours. I've had a headache. I don't usually get headaches, so I must have scurvy. I need no, some like... Bit again, I need some dark leafy greens and some vitamin C, some fruit and it's berries. It's a bit hot here. Hey, cut it out. I'm pretty tired. I feel like I'm drunk. Oh, I'm trying to sail in here. It's not working. In case you guys didn't know, we've got no wind. <laughs> Lenny, should we throw you overboard? Should we throw you overboard and make the boat a little bit lighter? blowing under five knots for the last couple of hours so we're basically drifting in i think we've had four days of mostly under four knots and sometimes with head currents during that time i've never experienced anything like it what do we do do you want me to call up and see if there's any ships nearby that can drop it off well Stu can probably organize it Okay, no hurry. He said he'll um, call me on the radio soon. There's enough in the fuel tank that I could keep bleeding it, but the closer you get to land, the more trouble you're in, so. We are officially adrift. The engine's still working, but it's like sucking in air, which means it's not gonna last much longer. So we just called our friend Stuart on the phone and he said he'd get us on the radio. He's gonna try and organize someone to come out and give us some diesel. It sucks, cause we are that far away. Wabi Sabi, this is Vagabond. Hey, I think I see you. I can't go that fast, but I'm on my way. So I'm probably a mile away from you. Roger, mate. Nah, all good. Brilliant. Thanks, mate. We survived. We did. Both engines are still running, so I technically didn't run out of fuel. Stuart, such a legend. <laughs> he hired a little motorboat. Bought a jerry can of diesel for us. We probably could have made it in through the channel with what we had left, Riley said, but just in case, like the last thing we want is it just fizzling out. I said I'd take the tender in, but he's like, no, 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 he's too nice. Meanwhile, Lenny's been sleeping this entire time. Thank you, Lenny. <laughs> Montauk looks amazing. So green and it's a different landscape, which I was really looking forward to seeing. Like the Bahamas is gorgeous, but it's all sand and palm trees. And now we've got like vegetation. Next time we explore beautiful Montauk, be sure to hit the notifications bell next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on that one. Thanks so much for tuning in, we love you guys. I love having, or going a long way towards having an autonomous boat. And I thought that that what and see would be amazing. And it's a good bit of kit, but what happens is we're a really fast boat. So once you need to have the fins set to a certain pitch for what speed that you've got. And I know they've got a race version now, which actually changes the pitch perfectly for how fast you're going. But for us, with a fixed pitch angle propeller, what happens is as soon as the wind builds up, say it goes from 15 to 19, which it did this afternoon, all of a sudden we're surfing over 12 knots. And then uh, we're getting a lot of power, which is great. And then all of a sudden we're getting too much power, it vibrates. The race version just goes flat. So no, no excess power is coming in. This one just sort of stops and vibrates. And then you've got to pull the thing out, which is not easy. I, it's, just, it's by far the most dangerous thing I do on the boat. Um, so I, I don't want to sort of bash what to see. I think their product is really good in certain circumstances. So if you're a mono hull um, or a catamaran that's not gonna have such a dramatic change in speed, 
uh, then it could work quite well for you. But just real life practical experience, once the sea state builds up, we're like, oh no, all, all of a sudden now we have to pull it out, which is exactly when you don't want to be pulling it out, you want to be adjusting sails and making the boat all safe. So yeah, um, it's really good being a crowdfunded site so that I can say, I can give you honest information like that. Had, had, had it been a different setup, that would be more difficult. So yeah, in summation, which I probably did before, it's a good product for certain boats, but once you're going over a certain speed or have a dramatic change in speed, you really need the race version. You, it, it's crazy having that one on this boat.